What's up guys, Mike the AK Phony, and this is the top five video games of 2012 voted on by me. And this doesn't mean that your opinion doesn't matter, it just doesn't count right now. So that, I mean, that's, if you guys wanna leave comments and tell me that my opinion is wrong or I didn't play a game so it doesn't matter, then you know what, suck my balls. Now this list is a bit more difficult to put together than the top five soundtracks list. And the reason why is because I have listened to about 20 to 30 soundtracks or so this year. I've played 275 plus games. That is a lot. If I had started Indie for Breakfast at the beginning of the year, it would be well over 300. That is how many games I had to choose from to get five out of. So I'd like to at least mention a handful of games that I feel are great games, but they didn't quite make the top five for one reason or another. And those games are like Deadly 30, fun game. I loved it, I had a blast, it was uh, it was stressful and also a lot of fun. You guys enjoyed watching it, it was easily one of your guys' favorite shows. Comedy Nights, you guys love Comedy Night. I hated it because it was so degrading to go in there and deal with like those people face to face. But Comedy Night was a really fun uh, nightcap. Very infrequent though, you couldn't really go in there at any time and have like a blast because sometimes you just really don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. How about Ravaged? How about Planet Side 2? Here are two games that are definitely right up my alley. I love Ravage. I love getting in there, blowing shit up, and getting out. It's, it's, it's the best nightcap to any night of streaming. It's like you go and you play, you get tired of a game, and then you know what, F it, Ravage. And everybody jumps into Ravage, and we just blow each other up. And that's it, that's, that's what makes Ravage so great. Planet Side 2, here's a game that you could play with like a thousand of your friends. That is definitely something that I, I, I think should have probably made it to number six if I had a number six on my top five list, but I don't. And the main reason why is because it just hasn't been out long enough yet. I don't know if a month from now I'm gonna consider it to be one of my top five games of 2012. It, might, it more than likely will be one of my top five games of 2013, but uh, that'll, be, that'll be something I'll have to address at the end of 2013. How's that? Now remember, every game that I picked to be on the top five today has a specific reason why it's there. And I'm gonna explain each and every one of them and you guys might wanna stay tuned because you never know what's gonna not make the top five that you guys would probably assume would definitely be there. So kicking things off with number five, Fez. No matter how old you are, whether you're 17 or 57, there was a game that came out, whether it be 10 or 20 years ago, that you will absolutely never forget. And the reason could be anything. It could be the soundtrack. It could be just the intro sequence. It could be the, the ending of the game itself that it hit you so hard that you're just like, wow, I will never forget this moment because I didn't see that coming. Fez is one of those games, and it almost didn't happen. Phil Fish made the announcement in like 2007 that it was gonna come out in 2010, and he kept pushing it back. He had problems with his partner, he read it all a pixel art like 50 times. There's so many problems that plagued the development of Fez for so many years, and even after it was released, there was still problems with the save game files, with the patch updates, and game-breaking bugs. But despite all of that, Fez still turned out to be an amazing package. It had the soundtrack. It's in my top five soundtracks. It's that good. The gameplay is great. The level design is great. There's no bosses. It's it's not it's not like that. It's just a game where you just have to save the world, and the world's falling apart around you. Like you see glitches on the screen that look like you need to pull out the cartridge, put it under your shirt, and and of course, when we're talking about a game, we're taking everything into consideration. The music, we're taking the, the graphics, uh, the, the, the delivery of the message of the game, the gameplay itself, right? The responsiveness, all this stuff really, really matters. And even though it took five plus years to come out, it still feels like work went into this. I mean, the bugs and all that stuff aside, it still feels like the core of the game, the heart of the game was created with, for lack of a better word, soul. Coming in at number four is Little Inferno. This is a game that definitely hurt my feelings for at least a solid week. And it's such a simple game. 90% of the game is just, you're throwing things into a fire, you're getting letters, but you read those letters and you start to relate and just connect with these people you've never met. The stupid weatherman guy. Like I looked forward to those letters because it let me know that the world still exists outside of my door or even right behind me. The game had a message that a lot of us could really relate to, and that's one of the reasons why it was so impacting. Even during the gameplay itself, just through letters and things that would happen while you're playing. Listen, you're looking at a fireplace for the entire game. If the game lasts three hours, for two hours and 45 minutes, you're looking at this fireplace, and you would think, 
okay, that's really dumb. There's not a whole lot of variety here now, is there? But the game knows how to keep you going. The pacing of the letters, the, the way that you unlock the books to get more better stuff. And it's funny, in retrospect, looking at the progression that was happening while you were playing, there was so much more there that you miss because you're so entranced by the gameplay itself. And then, of course, I mean, the game, the game soundtrack is on my top five soundtracks. So we all know the soundtrack was pretty much superb. And let me tell you, talking about lasting impressions, I will never forget how I felt during the Sugar Plums incident. I will never forget that. And some of you, I could tell by the comments, you guys were all right there with me. And that's why this game is definitely deserving of being in the top five. Coming in at number three, FTL, Faster Than Light. Yes, this game is definitely worth a top five mention. I have put so many hours into this thing. It's just, those of you guys who watch Any For Breakfast, you guys, you all know that I like roguelikes. And I just, in general, I, I like science fiction and technology. That's the kind of person that I am. So when those things are rolled up into a game, which is what FTL is, then of course I am sold on it. This is one of those games that it's a cheap indie title where you can pick it up and you could start doing okay right away. <laughs> I say okay because the game itself, it's random, right? The only thing that's fixed is how many sectors you have to complete and who the last guy you're gonna fight is. That's pretty much the only fixed thing that you're gonna get out of this. So that means you can make one jump and then make one mistake and then you're dead. That's it, start over. And th that's how unforgiving the game is. But even playing it on easy is not necessarily cake. You can make mistakes or you could just have basically bad luck and that sucks, but it happens. And that's part of playing a roguelike and that's what makes them exciting. And even once you get over that noob hump or, or even become an expert, you have ways of essentially increasing the difficulty, not just by selecting normal, which is basically hard in this game, but you could choose a ship that starts off with no shield or that starts off with no weapons. There's there's all of these things you could unlock and basically you can moderate yourself. You could make it so that the game is now extreme difficulty because you don't have a shield or you don't have a, a weapon or you have one team member. There's all these different ways that the game is designed to allow you to essentially choose your own adventure in terms of difficulty. And these aren't the only reasons why the game is in the top five. I actually have, you know, stories about, <laughs> about FTL, which you don't normally get from a regular single player game, but because of the diversity that is created every single time you create a new ship or you ju jump to the next sector, then your experience is now different from anybody else that's played the game. Therefore, you now have a unique story to tell. But for me, it's a little bit more personal. When we were in the hospital having uh, our, our, our first kid, our first and only kid, by the way, uh, <laughs> there's there was a period of time immediately following the birth where everybody was in, was knocked out. My wife knocked out. The baby knocked out. Me wide awake. <laughs> so what do I what did I do? Well, there was only so many so many pictures and so many emails stuff I could send and, and contact information. There was, there was only so much of the of the, of the post uh, post birth admin stuff that I could do and hanging out with the kid was great except for he was always sleeping <laughs> so there were times when you just had downtime and I wasn't gonna leave uh, so I ended up pulling out my my iPad and using like splash top to log into the computer at home and ended up playing like an entire rounds of faster than lights just to kind of keep my mind busy to kind of keep keep things going, I keep my brain functioning. And I needed that, because I, I need that kind of, as a person, I need that kind of stimulation, I need things happening, I need flashy lights. And that kind of helped me bridge the gap between events that were happening at the hospital while we were there for that week. And obviously, you know, pausing the game is as simple as just hitting the space bar. So anytime something happens, someone walks in, they need something, some paperwork or whatever, the, the baby wakes up and I want to go and, you know, rub its face and stuff. I just hit the space bar and that's it, done. I don't have to worry about sitting there and get blown up. But let me tell you, the day that FTL comes out on iOS and Android platforms for mobile devices is the day productivity in the entire world stops. Coming in at number two is DayZ. That's right, the mod for the game that came out in 2009 definitely took off in 2012. I started playing about June or so and it immediately got me hooked. I was just like, wait a minute, here's a game where when you die, it's permanent. You lose everything unless you can make your way back and loot your stuff back. If you kill other players, you can loot their stuff. It's got this kind of a military aspect to it where you have to focus on, you know, concealment and, and stealth in a sense. You have to worry about that stuff. Camouflage is actually important in this game. 
Sneaking around is important. You can't make too much noise. You have to find food. You have to find water. You have to find ammo. You have to find your starting weapons. We had nothing when we first started playing in June. I don't think we had squat. We would spawn on the beach and run to the nearest anything in order to just, just to survive the first night. And despite all of its weird bugs and quirks and hackers and all that crap, it was still a game that was fun because in the end, when everybody dies, because everybody dies, you start over again with nothing. Everybody starts with nothing. And this, what's funny about this is that it encourages teamwork. Like you want to have friends on the server, people that can watch your stuff so you can make it back. And if it's way inland, then you're going to be trekking it for like an hour. It could take you so long. Granted, it may not take you an hour just to run across the map, but you're not going to have uh, a straight shot from point A to point B without encountering something, another player or zombies or something to sneak around. There's always going to be something that's going to ruin your day between point A and point B to try to get all of your crap back. And so that's that's part of the fun. It's, fu it's funny, right? It's like you die, you lose everything you worked hard for, but part of the fun is trying to get it back. This is not something that you see in most games. It just doesn't happen. And then of course, when night falls, that's when everything changes because now you can't see anything. And the only people that can see stuff are the ones that have NVGs. And there's not a lot of those people out there. There might be, you know, maybe five or so per server. But given the size of the maps that are available to you, you're not really going to run into them unless you go to a major city. OK, yeah, sure. If you go to Cherno or whatever, you're going to get jacked by somebody that can see in the dark. And, you know, maybe at that point you decide to go ahead and server hop to somewhere else. But <laughs> But then you have to find the server boss. You see, there was so many elements of this. And, and, and that's the thing. You can sit down with somebody that's played DayZ and you can just tell stories because everybody's had a unique experience in this game because it is so player driven. The entire thing, it's a sandbox game. You get in, you choose your own adventure with every decision that you make. When you meet another player, you choose if you want to be friendly or not. What you say is irrelevant. It's what you do. Here's a great example of a story that I'll probably tell people later on with Shizzle and I. Check this out. Shoot him. Don't shoot me! Ah, <laughs> uh, don't shoot me! <laughs> you, you, you are now. a terrible person. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have a backpack. Go on this way. This poor, this poor bastard. He's like, <laughs> I feel Stop so shooting. bad. I feel so bad. Stop shooting! And then you, you fucking open up voice comms and you say, "I can't. You, you, have, sorry, a back, you have a backpack. I'm sorry. You I have a backpack." Myself. I need the you, backpack. You it's are the biggest dick in the world. Like, this poor bastard. So you see, these are the unique experiences that you get from DayZ that you just can't find in a lot of games. Very few, as a matter of fact. And so obviously, this is why it's sitting at number two. Well, if they shot Shizzle, that means they saw all three of us. Yeah, because we were doing that thing where we all stand right we next all to each other. like idiots. <laughs> Coming in at number one. I hope you guys are ready for this. Journey. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Of course it's Trials Evolution, come on! <laughs> now before we get crazy, let's go ahead and break this down for people who have no idea what Trials is. Let's just say you just came across this video and you're just like, what is Trials? Well, it is a downloadable Xbox Live game. It's a 2.5D motorcycle platform racing game. It's created by Red Lynx and is a sequel to Trials HD. The basic controls are simple. You have gas, brake, lean forward, lean back. That's it. And I'll be honest, that does come across as being a little too simple, right? I mean, if you look at it, it's like, really, it's a racing game that only has like platformer controls? Yes, actually, it's like less than platformer controls, because at least in those, you can hit down and up and usually they do something. But that doesn't matter because this game is you versus the controller more than anything else. You have to be good at this game in order to succeed in some of the more difficult tracks. And the most difficult tracks aren't even made by the people who made the game. They're made by other players. And we're talking hundreds of tracks every single month that players are pumping out. But you don't have to have ninja type skills in order to have fun in the game. See, that's that's the thing. Because everything is player created, right? All of the downloadable tracks, all player created, you're gonna have varying degrees of difficulty. So I myself, I don't consider myself to be a, an extreme ninja, le like level four master, which 
I, I understand that it sounds ridiculous, but that's kind of a thing. But I would consider myself pretty good at completing just regular extreme tracks. But of course, you start with beginner and hard and medium tracks. And you have all of these varying difficulty, extreme environments. That's the other thing too, is that the environments are so insane. People are making games inside of this game. I, it's, it's so difficult for me to put in a simple blurb what Trials Evolution is. All I can tell you is that it is the ultimate sandbox, leaderboard based, community driven platform where you just have endless amounts of content. As most of you know, I have several shows based on Trials. I have Will It Donkey, I have Trials Evolution Tuesdays, very successful shows, some of my most successful shows as a matter of fact. And then of course, there's all of the live fun. That's the other thing, people enjoy watching other people play this. A lot of times, uh, it's for the reactions, I'm not gonna lie. But still, it is, it's still a spectator game. People enjoy watching it because it's racing. People understand that. This game came out April 18th of this year, and it is obviously immensely popular. It was featured at the end of PAX as the secret competition game thing they did, and the people that played were terrible, but if they're supposed to be, it's fine. And if you don't own this game, you are seriously missing out. And if you own a PC, don't worry because the PC Gold Edition of Trials Evolution is coming this next year. And I know you guys have all seen the editor in this thing. It is so it is beyond words how much depth goes into this. Every every clip that I've shown you during this this particular segment of the show has been from Trials. So if you saw a clip and you're like, "Wait, that's really weird. That's not Trials." No. Everything is from Trials, and that is how powerful this editor is. And I know that once it comes to PC, it's just gonna open the doors to just hundreds of thousands of just fucking assholes who will make dickhead tracks for me to play on my shows, and I cannot wait. So there you have it, folks. Fez, Little Inferno, FTL, DayZ, and Trials Evolution are my top five for 2012. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, Stay tuned for more. I have some analytics I want to go ahead and put together to show you guys what it is that you guys liked right here on Slash AK Mike be on YouTube in 2012.